everyone, welcome again to this course. Today we will focus on marginal and absorption costing systems. These are inventory evaluation systems in that we look at the cost components used to form the cost of a product. So, the marginal costing system involves only variable cost components of a product while the absorption costing system involves both variable and fixed cost components of a product. Let's start with the marginal costing system. Uh, this is also termed as the variable costing system in that it uses only variable cost components of a product in value inventory as we have stated earlier actually. But it is also referred to as a contribution costing system because with the reference to a profit statement which inventory is will always be included in as part of cost of sales, contribution will be computed first. And we know that contribution equals to sales less variable cost of sales. So after that, after having a contribution, will less the rest cost, that is, will be fixed costs. Then, the marginal production cost per unit, as I've said earlier, that will contain only variable cost components. So we'll have our direct materials, direct labor, and variable production overheads. We know that the elements of cost are always materials, labor, and overheads, right? And we know, or we should know that overheads represent all indirect costs, be it indirect materials, be it indirect labor, and be it indirect expenses. They are collectively known as overheads. So below the standard cost card with the marginal costing system, that is direct material, direct labor, variable overheads. All these are cost based on a unit, on a single unit. In the total of them, we'll give us the unit marginal cost. And we can see the performa for marginal costing system profit or loss statement. An income statement. So an income statement will rather have sales, less cost of sales, and less other operating expenses. So we'll have our sales with less cost of sales, and we know that cost of sales should be formed of Opening inventory plus production cost less closing inventory as seen here, which will have the variable cost of units sold. Opening plus production less closing will have the variable cost of units sold. But up to here, we have used only variable cost of production. We'll have to add up other variable costs not related to production other variable cost and the total of which will form the total variable cost of sales to the right of you to the right or to the, la to the last column which if subtracted from sales will have our contribution margin or simply contribution so up to the contribution margin we have subtracted all variable costs so we are left with only fixed costs so if you left all fixed costs we'll have our profit or loss so just like that and the marginal costing system profit statement is obtained. We just have to note that to obtain the value of closing inventory, we take the cost per unit, CU, times opening inventory units. The cost per unit is, is computed as above. It is computed as here in the standard cost card. Then the cost of production will take the cost per unit times units of production and the closing inventory will take cost per unit times units remaining at the end of the period. Now, marginal costing system has advantages and disadvantages. The first of which there is no under or over absorption of overheads which represent variances. We'll see about over and under absorption when we reach the absorption costing system. But actually, under or over absorption just represent variances and variances are used for control an organization. Second, fixed costs are simply charged in full to the period. So we do not go through the hassle of uh, including the component in the cost of a product to just expense them to the period that they are. But also the marginal costing system is very useful for internal use. Management always use marginal costing system because they value inventory using only variable cost. And so, especially the short-term decisions, which variable cost will always change just because of the changes of activity level, but fixed cost will probably remain constant until a certain level. So, internal management always prefer marginal costing system. 
then back to the disadvantages disadvantages first of all uh the marginal costing system is not allowed uh as per international accounting standards too that is inventory you cannot be used to value inventory actually the international accounting standard number two allows only the absorption costing system but also in the long term in the long term profit planning uh, the marginal costing system is not better because uh in the long term even the fixed costs which we have ignored so far even the fixed costs which we have ignored so far will change and so the absorption costing system will be a better system then back to the absorption costing system so as you just stated the absorption costing system is also called a full costing system as it involves both variable and fixed cost components of a product so the component that it will have it will have all components of the marginal costing system but in addition it will have the fixed production overhead and below here the standard cost card of the absorption costing system so direct materials direct labor variable overhead fixed overhead these are all costs of these are on a per unit basis so if you sum them we'll have our unit absorption cost you can note something we have not included direct expenses in your standard cost card but direct expenses if given in a question represent uh, the variable cost component and an example of direct expenses is say you want to produce something you want to produce a product you need a machine you don't have one so you have to hide so those costs incurred will form the direct expenses of the product then below the performer for the absorption costing system profit or loss statement so sales as usual less cost of sales that will be opening inventory production and closing inventory if you add them and subtract them, I uh, will have the cost of sales to the right, which will be subtracted from sales and will have the gross margin that is an adjusted, an adjusted gross margin or gross profit. You can note the difference between this and the marginal costing system where we obtain the contribution, not the gross profit. Because here in the cost of production you have used both variable and fixed cost components so this is the profit and adjusted because this is an under or over absorption by under or over absorption we compare the over the fixed production overhead that should have been included in the statement and what was actually included so by under absorption we mean that we included less than what we should have included so by this we have to add it to our cost of sales but unfortunately we have computed the gross margin without adjusting the cost of sales above and so if there was an under absorption that would have meant that we would have had to add the under the under absorbed overhead to the cost of sales but we did not do that so by subtracting that means we overcasted the unadjusted gross margin and right now to adjust the issue we have to subtract it so under absorption you subtract then over absorption you add and then you have your real gross margin or gross profit then after that we have used all our production costs and only non-production costs have not been used both variable and fixed so just subtract them as period costs and we get our profit all loss actually there is an alternative statement for the marginal of the absorption costing system as seen below the only difference here is the placement of the under or over absorption so as you see in this statement now the under or over absorption has been placed just below the cost of sales so if it was an under absorption meaning that the cost of sales was under cost we add it and over we subtract it then we, we get the gross margin that is already adjusted and then we less the non-production cost we should note that the absorbed overheads occur in the total cost of production actually when solving the questions we will see what we are talking about so let's go to the advantages of absorption costing system first of all it is in compliance with the international accounting standards number two inventories as we stated earlier when we are discussing the disadvantages of the marginal costing system but also 
It involves analyzing under or of absorption of overhead that helps in cost control. Actually, under or of absorption means a variance, and the variance arises when comparing expected results against actual results. But also, it is fair to charge fixed production costs to output if they are incurred to, ac to accomplish them. Fixed costs are, are actually incurred to produce a product, so they should actually form a part of, part of a product. Then disadvantages. It is more complex to operate than marginal costing, as we have seen the complications of over and under absorption. But it is not useful for internal reporting. For internal reporting, especially in the short term, Management will not prefer as the absorption costing system as the fixed cost will be constant and so it will not be wise uh, to consider them. But also the absorption costing system may be manipulated by overproduction to provide cover for lower sales. What do I mean by this? When dealing with the absorption costing system, if you overproduce, since the fixed costs form part of the product, if you overproduce, you will make your cost of sales, you, I mean, you will make your closing inventory be much higher. And if the closing inventory is much higher, that will mean the lower cost of sales, and the lower cost of sales calls for the higher profit. So in, 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 in the first period, it, it might seem that you have made a good profit, but this will cost you in the next period, because in the next period, that closing inventory will be part of the opening inventory that will have to compensate uh, and to make the cost of sales much larger. So what is over and absorption, as I said? We compute it by comparing absorbed overheads versus actual or expected overheads. Versus actual, if we are preparing statements at the end of the period where we have the actual result, versus expected if we are preparing at the start of the period where actual results have actually not happened. So absorbed overheads represent overheads already included in the cost of sales under the production section. How do we compute them? Absorbed overheads, we take our overhead absorption rate times actual or expected activity level, depending on the time we prepare our profit statements. So the overhead absorption rate is computed as the budgeted fixed production overhead divided by the budgeted activity level. An activity level could be anything, could be labor hours, machine hours, units produced, etc. So if actual overhead is greater than the absorbed overhead, that means what actual is what should have been included. That means what should have been included is much higher than what has actually been included because by absorbed we mean what is included. So if what should have been included is much higher than what is included, then we have included less and this is an, an absorption. And the reverse, if actual overhead is less than absorbed overhead, then we have to reduce that difference from cost of sales as it is an over absorption. Uh, in the next video, we are going to look at the examples and thereafter we'll have a grasp on how to reconcile the income statements and the two methods and learn reasons for the differences. Thank you. Uh, until next time, be safe.